Well, that was different. Love it. How many of you feel his presence this morning? Yeah, he's here. That was weak. How many of you feel his presence this morning? Yeah. <clears throat> probably won't be like that in heaven. It probably won't be that weak. And weak applause. We're going to be jumping up and down and glorifying him and magnifying his name eternally, forever. I think we're going to get loud in heaven. I think we will. I think we'll be loud. I think we'll be, I'll be, I love it. I love it. So we've been talking. Um, I started last week and um, I've got a little ring in this mic if, if we can fix it. I don't know if we can figure it out. But it might just be up here. We talked about uh, um, different people in the Bible who, who have said yes to God and how it's impacted um, the world, you know, um, how Mary said yes to Jesus and, and Jesus being birthed through her and, and how that touched all of us across the board. That one yes changed it for all of us where we all could have eternal life with heaven because of Jesus coming. And we can't even really discuss what the no would look like with her because we don't know. I mean, would God have another plan? Would he have another way? I don't know. She just said yes. And then that yes was the, the most powerful thing that we, that we could ever say to God is what she said is yes. And a lot of you guys... are in and out of a yes to him. I think deep down you want to say yes to certain things, but because you don't know what's in front of that yes, it's hard for you to say yes to God all the way. You will say yes with all your um, contingencies, you know, um, of, of that yes. And so, I want to pray before we start, but I want you guys to ask the Lord specifically what yes that he has asked for you to say yes to. What, whatever he has asked for you to say yes to. I want you to, as we're praying, I want you to focus on that particular thing. If he said yes to be, um, go minister somewhere. If he says yes to talk to someone in the street. I mean, I don't have a problem with that, but some of you might. I mean, how many of you have struggle with ministering to people in the street? The rest of you minister to people all the time. We should be overpacked then, um, for sure. But for some, I, and I don't want to take it for granted because some people, um, it's hard for them to say yes to certain things because for me it's natural. It comes natural for me because that's who I am. It's what's built in me. That's how it's part of my life, my upbringing. And, um, you know, just I just had to do a lot of things on my own, so I learned how to just say yes, you know, to a lot of things. And when I met Jesus, I learned how to say yes to him and everything. It's like every time he asked me to do something, I'm just like, yeah, I'll do it. Yeah, I'll do it. I don't even care what's in front. I don't even care if I trip and fall or struggle in any way. But um, my yes is totally devoted to him. And I've got these ladders behind me and I'm going to do some acrobatical stuff here in a minute. But um, We'll see what happens. <clears throat> and a lot of you, when you pray, I feel like that, that just like Zachariah, when you pray and you ask God for a blessing in your life and God wants to say yes to you, you don't even know how to receive the yes that he has for you. You don't even know how to receive the answer to the prayer that you prayed. You know, when Zachariah prayed for a child, obviously he prayed for a child and the angel come and said, your prayer has been answered. He's like, well, how, how's this going to happen because I'm, I'm old? How's this going to happen because my wife is old? He calling her old too. But God has a plan. There's nothing that's impossible with God. Your wildest dreams could come true. Do you know that, that your wildest dreams could come true? I remember I sold my first my guitar. I sold my guitar so I could go to Haiti. Sold my guitar to go to Haiti for the first time, leaving the country. And that was the best thing I ever did was sell that guitar. I bought several since then, but I sold that guitar, the only guitar I had, to go to another country to see what they don't have. 
And I appreciated what I have even more. It made me quit complaining about cheeseburgers being made wrong. At McDonald's because they didn't have anything to eat. It brought a different perspective to my view of things. Going somewhere where they struggled to just eat food. And I remember as a kid, I did. there was times when we didn't have stuff, but it wasn't like they struggle. I mean, they come from miles. Shelly and I would feed over 500 kids a week in Haiti for several years. And they would come from all over the place just to get a loaf of bread or a box of food. You don't realize how, and, and I know that this might be a little deep this morning, but we'll, we'll make it fun here in a minute. But you don't know how important your yes is now. Your yes now can change history. It can set the stage for another person's yes. See, Abraham set the stage with his yes to venture out and do what God said to do, leave his parents. He, he said yes. God said, I'm going to give you, I'm going to, I'm going to bless you like you ever, ever, ever imagined. He didn't know what was in front of him. He didn't know that his yes was going was gonna, to was gonna birth a generation of blessings for the whole world to prepare a way for a Messiah to come into the world by Mary is yes. So there's all these yeses that we'll get into in a couple weeks of the different yeses that men have said, women have said, to set the stage for the big yes that Mary said that Jesus is coming into the world to be our Savior. And now he's here. Now we can say yes to him and receive him into our life. But, but what does that yes mean to receive him? A lot of people take it as like, I ask Jesus to come to my heart, I ask him to live in my life, and, and that's it. That's not it. That's just the easy free gift that you get. By saying yes to Jesus. By taking him as your Lord and Savior. You know that the Holy Spirit came upon Mary and she conceived a child. And then you have Elizabeth over here who is six months pregnant. And the moment, the moment that Mary speaks when she comes in contact with Elizabeth. The moment she steps on the scene and says a word. The baby inside leaped. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. It's a chain reaction. The yeses that we say are chain reactions to the goodness that God has, to the blessing that God has because of Abraham. God said he's going to bless all of his seed. The whole world will be blessed because of his yes. Jesus said yes to God. The plan that God had. So I want you to know that you do not realize how valuable, how important your yes is. And I, I feel like that we are struggling with the world so much that we struggle with the things of the world. With just things that we do, all these things. Listen, all I want to do is serve God. I was praying last night and I said, Lord, I said, I just want to serve you. I just want to live for you. I, I mean, I don't, I don't have to have all these things, even though I'm, he's given me things. He's given me blessings. I don't have to have that to serve him. I don't need none of those things to serve God. I just need him. And I know this morning, I just I felt him so strongly in my spirit, and, and, and I just... I just I know I had control of that situation there as far as playing and not playing, but I just felt like God saying, just sit here a minute and let them experience what you're experiencing. You know, Jessica Rose, you talk about taking them into the, your prayer room, into your prayer closet, you know, just for a moment, just to understand what it really feels like to serve God wholeheartedly. But that's all that you're after is Him and nothing else. And I believe that's why he called me 
and Shelly here to Martinsville because he knew our yes would be a solid yes. There's no trifling in between it. There's no playing in the world. There's none of that. Throughout the Bible, we read inspiring stories of people who said yes to God and the call and the purpose for their life. Their obedience and their surrender to God has paved the way for His plan of salvation to unfold. And I understand that the yes to God requires faith and then fire and requires us to be courageous and to trust Him in His promises. See, we see things how, when we're not serving God all the way, we see things how the world sees them. We step into that way of the world and the thinking of the world. And I want you to know this morning, the world can only take you so far. It cannot take you where God wants to take you. You cannot see the things that God wants you to see living in the world. You just can't. I mean, we can climb the ladders of success in life, and we can climb a ladder to success, and we can climb it, and, and God will give us something in life, and, and, and we feel like, man, I'm, I'm, I'm doing great, and we got, you know, more finances and more stuff. We're like, man, I'm doing great. God's blessing me, you know, but yet we're not even seeking him. We're not even serving him, but he's going to bless you because that's the God he is. He loves you. It rains on the just and the unjust, and the blessings are the same way. The unjust and the just are blessed the same way. There's millionaires that don't serve God, but they're millionaires. You're like, how they become a millionaire? There's people that don't serve God, and you're like, what? There's been people walk away from church because they were doing everything they knew to do, and they saw someone else do nothing that they were supposed to do. And for instance, a young man come, and he... And, and he was everything he, he needed to do to be able to get custody of his kids back. His wife was doing drugs. And she's the one that got custody of the kids. So he walks away from God. Having that world mindset. And we can say yes to the world. And, and when you, you say yes and you just keep saying yes and keep saying yes and you keep doing the things in the world, saying yes to the world, and, and, and thinking that it's bringing you joy. And sometimes it does, but it's only for a little season that it'll bring you joy. And finally, you come to a climax in, in your walk, when you're walking the world. You come to a climax, and you're literally on top of, you're on top of the, on the world's mountain, per se. And you're, you're up here, and you're like, now what? This is it. This is all you get to see serving the world. You don't get to go any further than this. And if you don't know Jesus said your Lord and Savior, hell will be your ending. The only thing you have is to go down. There's no more going up at this point. And I want to talk to you this morning about saying yes to open doors. Some of you guys have opened doors to the demonic realm. And I might step on some feet here, and I, I really don't care. Um... Halloween is, demon, is demonic. Trifling with it is demonic. It's not, there's nothing sacred about it. There's nothing holy about Halloween. Dig into it, look into it a little bit. There's nothing sacred or holy about it at all. Nothing, not one thing. It's all anti-Christ. We can wrap it up in what kind of a bubble we want to wrap it in. We can wrap it in what kind of gifts and cute outfits and all that stuff that we want to wrap it in. But that's not saying a full yes to God. That's having one foot in the world and one foot in, with God. So that's where we are. I, went, I don't know how many churches I went by yesterday uh, on my way to, to Indianapolis. You go by all these churches and they all have one foot here. And in my opinion, and I'm just going to my opinion, one foot here. Because they're wanting to please people. They're wanting to build crowds of people in their sanctuaries to pay for the bills that they've racked up. See, the more bills you have, the more people you have to have to pay those bills. 
But when we live in life and we say yes to God, we need to mean this is it, God. I'm saying yes to you. I don't know what it's going to look like. I don't know what's going to happen. Abraham did not know. In, 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 in um, Genesis 12, 1, I think, 12, 1, is that up there? Now the Lord said to Abram, go forth from your country and from your relatives. Wives, let your husband be the husband. Walk away from daddy and let your husband be the husband. Go back to the other one. Did I read it? Go back to the other. I didn't get it all, I don't think. From your father's house. And to the land which I will show you. Is that one through three? That's one? Okay. Go to the next one. Sorry. And, and I will make you a great nation. I will bless you. What did he say to Mary? He said, you're blessed. Why? Because Abraham said yes. That's why she's blessed. Because he was obedient in his Yes. And I will make your name great. And so you shall be a blessing. And I will bless those who bless you. And the ones who curse you, I will curse. And you, listen, all the families of the earth will be blessed. That's a promise to you and I. Because of his yes, you get blessed. Regardless of whether you serve God or whether you don't serve God, you get blessed. Because it's a promise that God made to all, all, not the ones who serve God, all this, all the families of the world. But some of you are playing on this ladder right here. You're playing at the world. You're playing with the things of the world. And, you, and then some of you, like, this is, this is the mindset of some people, and because I've heard them say it. Um, this week, I tried to minister to a guy, and, and I, I usually I get to minister to people, but sometimes I don't get to because if they don't believe in God, the Bible, like the Word of God, they don't believe in God, the Word of God and Jesus, it's kind of hard to even say anything to them because they're not believing anything you say at all. So my, and then I just turn into prayer. Like God, open their heart, open their eyes, open their mind to see the things that you see. And this guy, he's like, he's like, he's like in and out of prison, in and out of drugs. And he's like, like, and he's on this, he's on this ladder, or he's on this world thing. He said, I feel like I'm, I'm the best I could be. He's living in an abandoned house. But because he's deceived by the enemy, he can't receive the blessing that God has for him and the yes that Abraham had. And so he's standing on this top of his peak thinking, I have it all. I have it all. And I want you to know he didn't. He doesn't. He's deceived. He said he don't believe in the name of Jesus. He believes in a higher power, but not in Jesus. So I pray for him. I've, I've been praying for him. But some of you are here. I go to church on Sunday. Yet when the occasion rises up, I go to my ball games, or I go do my other stuff, or I go to all the things in the world. And I'm not saying those things are bad. I'm just saying we need to put things in perspective. Because this yes is more important than this yes. These yeses that we say to the world are okay in some circumstances, but it's not the main thing that we need to seek. Because there's going to come to a point where you keep saying yes to God, yes to the world, yes to God, I don't think I can get up to that one. And you just keep saying yes to the world. But then you, then you get to a point where it's like you've done sunk so deep into the world. You've done got your children all sunk into that. And you're like, well, I gotta, now I've got to cater to this because I've created this mess. And I've got to cater it. Instead of just cutting it off, you still try to fight for that. And you're still trying to reach for this. And you're reaching further and further and further. You're not know, reach for this, for this. I should have stretched this morning, probably. <laughs> I can't go no more. But this is where we are. 
what are we going to do? We have to make a turn. There has to be a turning point because there comes a split in the road. We have to make a decision. What are we going to do? Are we going to give this up all the way and seek this? Because like I said, you can, you can see just this. This is what I can see. But with this one here, look, you go higher and higher and higher and higher, and higher, and higher, and there's so much more, there's so much more that you can see up here that you couldn't see down there. Why? Because God wants to take you higher than you've ever been, see things you've never seen before, go places you've never gone before. God wants to take you to those places. He wants you to say yes to Him. He wants you to say yes to all that He has for you. What are you going to do? Are we going to play in the world? Are we going to keep trifling with sin? I cut it off. I had to. You know what that entailed? All things become new. I had a whole bunch of new friends. My old friends didn't like me no more. But let me tell you this, all my old friends come back around because I prayed for them. They come back around and now they're serving God. Why? Because I said yes to Jesus. So my encouragement to you this morning is, is in, in, as, I, as I said, we're going we're gonna to study some different about Moses and Joshua and Abraham. You know, Abraham set the stage for the yes. He didn't even have no kids, and God said, you're going to have so many kids. Anybody know how old his wife was when she had her first kid? No. Eighty years old. I think the oldest American that's had, like, like in our day, is like 60, 65 maybe, that's had a child. That was about what Elizabeth would have been. Um. And still, he was freaked out about it. How are we going to do this? How's this going to happen? And listen, God has so much for you, and I missed half my notes, but God has so much for you this morning. He has a plan for you. He has a plan through you to reach somebody else. And that plan is going to be cut off the things that are not necessary that you walk in, that you go for, that you live for. And start walking for him. Can you have things in the world? Yeah. You can have it all. Matter of fact, the Bible says you can do anything. Do whatever you want to do. Let's stand. Philippians 4.13 I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. If it feels like it's going to be too hard to go through, if it feels like you can't see the rest of the way, that's okay. Abraham couldn't see. It was Abram at the time, but Abraham couldn't see all that was in front of him, but he said yes, and he walked that yes out. And that yes is a blessing to you and I. So your yes will be a blessing to somebody. Maybe a lot of somebody. So let's put the things of the world aside. I want to I share with you real quick before I close. The reason that I am so against certain things is because I've been in the middle of it and I've experienced it firsthand. You want to know I've been to hell just like I've been to heaven. I've seen it. I've been there. I know what it looks like. I know what it feels like. And I don't want anyone to go. And I'm not saying that if you trifle in this stuff that God has not don't have forgiveness for you because he does. There comes a fine line where you have to go, okay, God, where are you at in this? 
you know, we can see we can see God in other things, other things that we celebrate, and we can see God. But but this particular, where do we see God at? I mean, if you have somewhere that you see God at, please come after service and tell me, because I'll be glad to um, enlighten me. Where do we see God at in, in, the, in, the, in Halloween? I know it's cute. All the kids dressing up and going to get candy and stuff. But there's a deeper meaning behind it. And there's spiritual doors that we open and we don't even understand that we're opening. You have to know that. See, we see in this realm. We don't, we don't see beyond this realm. We don't see in the spiritual realm. Ask the Lord to show you what the spiritual realm looks like. Ask him to show you. And Elijah and Elijah were in a battle. God gave him a glimpse of what the spiritual realm looked like. He's like, how are we going to beat them? Showed him the spiritual realm, the armies that God had set. If I've offended you, talk to Randy. He'll walk you through it. I love you guys so much. Let's pray. Father, we just thank you, Lord, right now for the yes that we've said to you. Lord, we thank you right now that there's so many out here that need to say that yes and need to fulfill that yes and walk completely in. Father, I pray right now if anyone's got open doors that they've opened, Lord, to, to the dark side, they would come up front or they would see where they're at and just close those doors, Father, and seal those doors so tight. And, and empty those places out, Father, and they would fill those places with all of heaven, all the joy of heaven. I just thank you, God, that you, you're, you're a perfect God. And your word lays out a perfect plan for your people. And that the yeses that we say are part of that plan. Because we get to be used by we get to serve you. We get to worship you. And we get to make heaven our home. These are all powerful people. You create them all to be. Amazing sons and daughters. Not all of them will be not your heart for them. So I pray your heart would be fulfilled in them this morning. In Jesus' name. We're going to open the altars up for just a minute. And I'm not going to make it real long because I don't want to like twist your ankles or twist your feet and make you come to the altar. I mean, you should already know during part of the service whether you want to be up here and pray. Been led the way. Is there anyone else? To pray. Anybody else? said, don't just come up here to get a fix. Come up here and get fixed. Say a once a week thing. I said, get it right. And get on fire for him. Got to. get some of these men gather around some of these men up here.
teams are free to go. Be quiet as you leave. Be honorable. Say hi to one another. Come back Wednesday. Pray with us. Next Sunday, 11 o'clock.